Welcome to Comet Compressor Private Limited e-learning program of tickering tool for L1 support engineer. So we are discussing about um, uh, ticketing tool requirement, what is the L1 support and um, what is the expectation for L1 support engineer in part 1. So in part 2 we are going to further discuss about the number of tools available and um, uh, support expected from the L1 support team. The capabilities of ITSM software. So we need to buy that software. It is not a bundled pack coming with Microsoft, right? So we have to buy it from a different uh, vendors. I'll show you uh, the number of vendors available in the industry. So what are the capabilities first? So what should be uh, available with the ITSM software? Suppose I am being a software company. I wanted to design a ITSM software for any other business requirement what should be there in the ITSM software. So any industries, IT industry, they will have L0 team or L1 team. Sometimes we call it as uh, service desk team or L1 team, uh, NOC team, whatever this, the terminology may be different. So service desk team uh, will be a, a front-ending team. That's a separate functionality in ITIL. And um, they will be taking care of all the L0, L1 related issues and uh, providing the support. They will provide a call support, mail support, uh, and remote uh, troubleshooting support. So everything they will be providing. So that kind of modules we should be having in the ITSM software. Then other than that, other management like um, incident management, problem management, process related. So that kind of modules will be available. So once you buy the software, by default, they will have the service desk module and incident module. Okay, Based on the budget, you can buy it. If you are planning to have uh, this kind of additional management, problem management, change management, asset management, whatever it is, you need to buy that modules also uh, into the software. They will charge you extra. Say, uh, uh, they will charge you 25,000 per module. For example, I am saying it may be more or less, I don't know, about the product. Uh, so when you are dealing with the product vendor, you have to be clear how many modules you wanted in the sense um, you, you need to plan um, in the budgeting or uh, this thing process side. So how many modules you are going to have? What are the things I'm going to focus? Maybe this year I will have three modules. From next year I will concentrate on the CMDB or asset management. So next year I'll buy those modules. Or otherwise one time you can buy it as a product and get a um, huge discount from the vendor also. So that is up to the organization. But these are the uh, modules we should be having in the ITSM software. So asset management software, that is asset management module that is very much required to track the life cycle of a, uh, IT assets uh, right from the purchase of the product till we move the asset to the e-waste. So we need to track the product. So that is very much required. Service catalog, the list of services, what we are going to provide to the end users that need to be tracked. CMDB, the network devices, components, whatever we are maintaining that should be available in the um, tracker. Knowledge management, uh, for any other uh, issues, we'll be creating a knowledge um, uh, document that should be updated uh, in the separate module. Any troubleshooting, uh, before we go and search in Google, we can uh, refer the local uh, knowledge management database and we can get uh, support from the local uh, tool itself instead of going out and doing it based on the error message based on the uh, issue we can get the support through our knowledge management and uh, cognitive service management nowadays we have a lot of uh, features added with uh, the ticketing system itsm tool even um, when you are opening up the banking websites or some other uh, financial websites there is a chatbot opening and they start asking what is your requirement, what is the exact thing required, and what is your plan, what is the things you are to do, everything, right? So in the same way, in ITSM, we'll be incorporating these kind of uh, services so that uh, we can uh, ensure uh, users' requirements are taken care of. Say, for example, uh, you have a chat bot. So once you say, I am facing this problem in over the chat, even before the agent that uh, service desk agent responds to a chat if chatbots are enabled with uh, scripts and solutions so if that solution is available with the uh, chatbot system it will automatically uh, provide you a support 
and uh, resolve the issue based on the error message what you are feeding right otherwise a service desk agent will uh, come in a chat uh, as a virtual agent because if I have to call you and do it it is a physical one-to-one -one mapping so I cannot handle multiple things if it is virtual I can do a chatting with four or five people in a time and um, handle the issues accordingly so it is enabling a service desk engineer to take multitasking so that is virtual agent and we have IOT internet based of um, thing, internet of things so there are a lot of advancements available in IOT uh, there are uh, production industries making benefit of it and even it is being implemented in um, many of the areas so these are all the major capabilities in the system so this is the uh, workflow uh, how a ticket will uh, move from one level to other level so as I told you there are some teams which are friend facing the services or the organization maybe it is a service desk team or a NOC team NOC team we call it as so they will be uh, taking the calls directly from the user or taking the tickets as the L0 team then it will be going to the L1 team mostly the L1 team will be a kind of desktop team or site support team we call it as so if they are not able to resolve the ticket they will move the ticket to the server team suppose I wanted to have some permission from the uh, exchange server so L1 exchange team cannot do it so they will move that to the L2 exchange team something like that so technology wise we will have this kind of team L2 exchange L3 exchange L1 AD team L2 AD team or otherwise what they will do for the L1 team they will give all the L1 privileges so the L1 team can handle the tickets in AD exchange network uh, so that will save cost for them so what they will do they will give training for all the uh, platforms and keep a common l1 team so they will handle the ticket and if they are not able to do it or they don't have privilege so immediately i will move the ticket to l2 network team or l2 database team l2 server team whatever it is but l1 team will have handful of um, uh, uh, tickets and um, uh, services supported so next is L3 team or further it will be moved to the so till the ticket is coming to the closure it will get escalated uh, it depends on the knowledge level or otherwise some organizations will have some time limit suppose one tower one team L2 team or L3 team not able to solve the problem by two hours or three hours or six hours of time ticket will automatically move to the L4 team so that kind of uh, configuration is also done but being a fresher or being a, a, a person just joining an organization mostly will be placed in the uh, L1 support team, L1 support desk or even service desk. So this is the hierarchy of uh, uh, towers, different teams available. So IT support engineer, so you are joining an organization and uh, as a desktop engineer or a system administrator or IT support engineer. So what will be uh, your uh, normal activities? So the main agenda is to provide support for the end users, whatever problem they have, maybe a desktop problem, laptop problem, mobile problem, or internet problem, whatever they face in their desktops, it is our responsibility to solve the problem. So this particular thing can be provided in person. Um, during the pandemic time, we are not able to uh, visit the offices. So most of the uh, support is uh, taken over the phone or online. But otherwise, site support means definitely physical uh, visit will be there and it will be taking the uh, system directly and um, uh, providing the solution. So the issue can be anything, maybe a small simple desktop related issues or any other network issues. It is our responsibility to uh, solve the problem or escalate it to the next team. So normally since we are handling um, always the desktop related issues we also call IT support engineer as a desktop support engineer since they are bound to only one site okay maybe Chennai alone or Mumbai or Delhi we call it as a uh, site support engineer different terms used in the industry but uh, the solution services offered is same so they are, they are mainly working in the IT department and providing IT related uh, uh, services so their main responsibility is um, providing and maintaining the uh, 
company's IT assets, maybe a printer, desktop, laptop, network devices, everything they have to take care. So their main duties uh, include troubleshooting to detect and solve the technical problems, installing or updating the required hardware. So if it is a server, you have to do a, um, a patch update regular basis. If it is a network component, you have to do a firmware update. So everything will be there uh, for uh, IT support. So considering that, uh, if you see what are the main duties and responsibilities, roles and responsibilities, allocation and maintenance of IT equipment, suppose a user joins, so immediately we have to allocate a desktop or laptop. Suppose a um, director level associate joins, we have some uh, criteria. So if normal user joins, we will provide a desktop. If it is manager level user join, we will provide a laptop. If it is director level associate joins, we'll provide a different type of laptop, which is different from the manager laptop, maybe a high-end model, smaller in size. And um, we provide uh, mobile devices, mobile connections. Okay, so there may be um, hi-fi mobiles available. So we'll provide uh, different types of things. Depends on the uh, designation. It, it's all uh, falling under organization standard, uh, not the individual decision. Okay, diagnose hardware and software issues, document and maintain IT inventory. We call it as asset IT ma asset management or uh, CMDB also in case of uh, server related. Review and resolve IT help desk requests. Prioritize and escalate issues as necessary. Sometimes the ticketing system itself will go for escalating the ticket. Otherwise, we have to take a decision of uh, escalating the ticket to the next level and resolve the issue because I cannot hold it because um, I should not think if I move the ticket to next level, they will think I am not capable of resolving the problem. So it is not the uh, way of thinking like capability issue because we have limited some kind of permissions, right? Uh, access rights. So even though you have the knowledge, you will not be able to do it at that level. Either you should get uh, promoted as a L3 engineer or L4 engineer so that you can handle those type of ticket. So we have to keep on um, moving the ticket if you are not able to uh, resolve at specific time. So that is required. Providing quick support to the VIP users. They cannot wait for some time, right? Uh, normal users, they can wait half an hour, one hour and also we can go and support them. But VIP users, they'll be in a continuous meeting or um, escalation. So uh, it should be immediate. So whenever uh, VIP tickets are coming, we should give high priority and solve the issues. In mobile devices, now all the organizations has mobility service. So they provide um, mobile support. And they have um, their mails in the mobile, their applications and company applications in the mobile so that on the go they can do the activity. So they do not wait for the laptop or desktop to be accessed. So these are the main duties and responsibilities. Uh, we have it for IT support technician. It may be more or less. It depends on the organization. but these are all the general uh, responsibilities available for an IT support engineer. IT services. In any IT industry, a company, or even the production industries also, these are all the list of IT services we'll be having. Mainly, we'll have a printers and support, like number of printers for printing the documents. Internet service. Internet as a service, right? So we have to provide them internet 24 by 7 without any interruption and the high uh, bandwidth file transfer service if they wanted to move the file to the client or download the software from the client so we need to provide the support web services uh, we have to provide data backup and restore so whatever project they do it will be there in the local desktop or laptop that has to be backed up into the server so that um, uh, if there is anything happens if my laptop crashes if my desktop crashes i can restore it from the server and give it to them back so desktop laptop imaging so any new desktop laptop is purchased that may have a factory image so we need to put uh, our um, uh, organization related images if there is no standard image available we can directly uh, start using it but you cannot have restrictions from the organization so we have group policy uh, kind of restrictions uh, in our organization that has to be implemented so group policy will be implemented uh, in OU level so once you move the object to the OU, the desktop or laptop to the OU, all the policy will be enforced to the particular endpoint. 
but it is always recommended to have a standard image as per your organization requirement. Software provisioning as a service, security services uh, like BitLocker and other software encryption, user account related services. So these are all the major services what you will encounter if you join as a L1 uh, person, as a L1 person, a service desk engineer or as a, a desktop engineer. So you should be having a knowledge. So suppose you are uh, uh, going for a training or um, uh, doing yourself as a self-learning, you should ensure you know about all these um, uh, services because you'll be getting issues related to this and you should be able to handle, start handle all these issues on a quick turnaround time. The ticketing system we discussed, so there are different types of uh, manufacturers, I, I cannot say manufacturer, no, these are all the companies which is producing the software. So different vendors are available, um, BMC Remedy, ServiceNow, CA, SolarWinds, so based on your organization budget, based on your size, um, you can choose it. Maybe, maybe the corporate uh, companies, they go for ServiceNow or Remedy or CA because they provide enterprise level global support uh, your organization spread across globally so I, I have seen uh, many people using service now and remedy mostly but um, it's not that um, the solar winds will not support or jira will not support it will also support it's all depends on the number of transactions what you do and again budget is also playing a major role nothing wrong because everybody is following a same ITL framework so we need to have a ticketing system uh, that may be uh, anything but um, we can adopt any uh, technology available and uh, can implement it for our organization. So requirements for L1 support engineer. So I already mentioned the um, uh, service areas or uh, the list of services we offered by a organization as IT service. So you should be having in and around uh, technical knowledge about those kind of uh, services. Suppose a printer problem, you should know how to solve the printer problem like uh, it, is it a paper jam, paper stuck or uh, uh, toner empty or um, um, the cable disconnected, cable not connected, printer is not powered on. There are a lot of related issues, right? So you should be knowing about all these issues. The basic troubleshooting should be the required uh, thing. And uh, analysts should have a good written communication because when you are handing the ticket, you should be responding to the user properly. So when uh, calling the user by name and uh, wishing him um, uh, good morning or good evening and uh, writing the issues you know, elaborately and uh, providing the steps what you have taken in resolving the problem. So that if somebody is looking at your ticket, they will have more clarity what was the issue and uh, what is the solution you have provided, is it working or not. So everything they can track it, able to narrate the issue shortly. So we cannot write stories in the ticket. It should be crisp and um, uh, should be able to understand properly. So that requires uh, real good communication knowledge. Provide the solution details clearly by writing the comments. As I told you, you cannot write stories. But in, otherwise, you should be mentioning all the steps what you have taken to resolve the issues. Maybe you have referred um, uh, Google or KETBR from Microsoft knowledge base. Whatever it is, you can refer it. In case of voice based service desk, um, you should be having good oral and written communication both. Because we will be calling and uh, talking to the uh, user, so you should have a proper communication. That's why the service desk people normally given training like a US accent or uh, other country based um, uh, support, they will be given a special training so that you are able to uh, take up the requirement, take up the call with the user and understand the issues and uh, act accordingly. That is a special uh, quality for the service desk team, voice based service desk team. So this is about the um, ticketing tool uh, introduction and uh, hope uh, you have got to know uh, what is the requirement of a um, uh, L1 support engineer uh, when you are joining an organization and what are all the areas you should know about it and what are all the tools you are going to use in an organization as a ticketing tool, not the technical tool I am discussing. So this is about the uh, ticketing tool for IT support engineer. Thank you very much.